on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Hello and welcome to They Think It's All Over. With David and Jonathan this week is a Swedish star who claims she can drink a pint of lager in five seconds. Just one nightclub brawl and she'll be eligible to play for Chelsea. Ulrika Johnson. <laughs> Guest captain this week, we were going to have Paul Merson, but he's fallen ill. But stepping in at the last minute, we have the one time fastest man on earth. These days, he's a proud grandfather with a traditional granddad's pipe, spike slippers, and a lycra cardigan. Linford Christie. <laughs> with Linford and Rory is a test bowler who, despite his many on the field achievements, has never been honoured by the Queen. She's aware of his record, she's just trying to keep him away from Prince Harry. Phil Tuffnall. <laughs> After last week's show, when Rory claimed to know the identity of Swedish comedy duo Galen Scarpana and Aftershave, <laughs> she suddenly joined Kraftwerk. <laughs> After last week's show, when Rory claimed to know the identity of Swedish comedy double act Garland Scarpana and Aftershave, we've commissioned an independent investigation into whether or not he was cheating. And the official verdict. Although there is no evidence whatsoever to suggest that Rory McGrath used illicit means successfully to answer the question put to him, precedent overwhelmingly indicates that Rory McGrath is a big fat <laughs> cheating git. <laughs> so last week's show is hereby awarded to David Steen. <laughs> We kick off this week with the Before claims... Before we start, Mick, though, <laughs> just that's, that's made me realise something, looking over there at old Cheaty Boy. Yeah. He's realised that this week, this show is not just a mere sports quiz. Mm. Oh, no, ladies and gentlemen, this week it is no less than a monumental battle between the forces of good and the forces of evil. <laughs> if you look over here, we've got the fragrant Ulrika, butler would not melt in her mouth, nor anywhere else where you might like to put it. <laughs> This is like Star Wars. Over here, you know, it's, it's the good side of the force. Over the dark side of the force. At the end there, look, you've got Smoke Wacky Backy over there. Look. In the middle, Darth Maul with his probably long double-ended lightsaber. <laughs> and at the end, look, Jabba the Hutt, a dead man. <laughs> the side of good versus the side of evil. Right, we kick off this week with the claims and counterclaims of Sporting Bluff. Linford, Rory and Phil, with one eye on the Winter Olympics starting tonight, your question concerns the proud sport of ice skating. Good position. Fast, split, triple twist. It's a very nice throw triple loop. Ice skaters have been warned that their routines are becoming too pornographic. Ice skaters have been warned not to take their ice skates in their hand luggage. Ice skaters have been warned not to fraternise with the judges. Blinford, do you think of the Winter Olympics being a comparable event with the Summer Olympics? Well, I uh, not really know. One's cold and one's warm. Yeah, yeah but can we not... <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Does anybody like the Winter Olympics? I quite, I quite like hurling. Oh, yeah. Curling. I like hurling. <laughs> hurling's when you chuck it up, mate. <laughs> Spoken like an Olympic champion. Yeah. <laughs> it was much more, it'd be much more fun if they had Autumn Olympics, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know, conkers. <laughs> Lighting a leaf fire. <laughs> Putting the clock back, it'd be much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the Winter Olympics is, you know, it's entered the kind of sexual jargon. I don't know if you know, downhill skating, uh, downhill skiing, that's known as a euphemism for lady pleasuring two fellas. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> and David, he loves the eight-man bob. <laughs> Isn't it the G-string? Up Sorry. the arse. I think they were complaining that... No, that's... <laughs> <laughs> you see, this is what he does. It mucks up your short-term memory. <laughs> He's answering a question from maybe three days ago <laughs> in a pod. <laughs> so you think that Ulrika was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. Ulrika was telling the truth, skaters will now have to clean up their act or they will have points deductive for routines deemed too revealing. And in the name of sport, here are some of those controversial shots.
I saw those two in casualty. <laughs> Canadian judge Anne Shaw complained that skaters are getting into really obscene positions and holding them for several seconds. When partners are tossed around, photographers get unfortunate shots. <laughs> the Olympic favourites, the US team, angrily defended themselves against the criticism, saying that there is nothing controversial whatsoever about their routine, Anal Farmyard 3. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Ulrika, your question concerns our absent guest skipper Paul Merson. Here he is setting up an hilarious Phil Neville own goal in the Cup recently. Oh, it's going to be an own goal! It's going to be an own goal by Philip Neville! Paul Merson applies Vicks Vapor Rub to his body before every game. Ooh. Ding dong. Mm. Clear and cool and minty. Mm. <laughs> 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 You've got to pass contact. myself, sorry. Uh, Paul Merson applies moisturiser to his body before every game. Paul Merson applies a Nicorette patch to his body before every game. Hey, it's lovely oh. having a week on the show. Isn't a week on. Um, isn't she great on Doggy Dog Days, gentlemen? Isn't she good on that? It's a great show. I love you that because you're tough, you're mean, you're like a female Anne Robinson. I think you do a great job. She's <laughs> <laughs> top four, though. Whoa, is it? <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> I've had Vicks on my chest. Have you? Mm. Oh, well, I didn't know. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no you can all make up your own. <laughs> Let's treasure that one for a second, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> just, just the one Vic. <laughs> but if you were away, though, if you were, because he would use something, some skin preparation. Because if you're playing your sports, you're away in a hot climb, maybe you're out in front of the sun. I mean, you, when you used to cricket, you know, in in, in when warm you countries. Used to cricket. <laughs> <laughs> when you used to play cricket, were you were out there sometimes for what three, four minutes at a time? time. <laughs> it could have, it could have, it could have made you look old. Could have bleached your hair. You've got to be careful. <laughs> Iris. <laughs> What do you? But what do you use to? What do you put on your skin to look young? Oh, I forgot. It's a wig, isn't it? <laughs> what, Phil, what do you use? Is it cannabis patch you use? Aye, uh, hey, yeah, no. Actually, I, I used to use the uh, Nicorette patches, but I forgot to stop smoking while I was using it. <laughs> yeah, I was running about like Speedy Gonzales for that. <laughs> no, I can't believe that. <laughs> oh, no. Why would he want to keep his nasal passages open up? Some people use those strips, don't they? They pr turn out to be totally useless. I think they were called um, Stoke City strips, weren't they? <laughs> I'm not going to hurt you because you're going to be dead soon anyway. <laughs> what would you think? Vic? Do you have another You must make it. Go for Vic. So you think that Phil was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. Yes, Phil told no word of a lie. Paul Merson and several other top players use vapour rub to help with breathing during matches. The Vix fad has now spread to most Premiership clubs. It was even tried at Liverpool, but Phil Thompson had a brain haemorrhage. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points, and Linford's team have three points. Our second round now contains some weird and wonderful excuses. Linford's team, it's Arsenal for you. Here they are in their feisty fourth round match against Liverpool last week. Lippinen looking for Owen and Richard Wright comes a long way. It's red. Arsenal have now had 43 sendings off since Arsene Wenger joined the club, but the manager has a perfectly good explanation for their terrible disciplinary record. What is it, Linford's team? Are you interested in football at all? <coughs> I'm an Armchair United supporter. Armchair United, great side, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they got sent off Keown and Bergkamp. Bergkamp. Carragher got, Carragher got, got sent, off. sent off, yeah. In fact, I was at that match. I had a, I had a, I had a flutter, actually. A pound on Jamie Carragher. On the nose. <laughs> <laughs> and he threw it back, for God's sake. What sort of scouser throws a coin back? <laughs> Cat, because you're don't... sorry, call you the cat then. Phil's nickname is the cat, is that right? Yeah, and your nickname was the horse, is that right? <laughs> Nay, <laughs> what's your nickname, Ulrika? Do you have a nickname? You've got the horse, the cat, 
Charles. <laughs> what a lovely nickname. Hey, hey. Charming. Who gave you that? Your mother? <laughs> is that Swedish? <laughs> it's not Swedish, no. No, it's not. What is it in Swedish? What were you getting at? No, I just wondered if you had a nickname. You know, we got the horse, the cat. I thought the fox might be a good thing for you. That's yeah, nice. and? <laughs> David, the fossil. Oh, I'm already the Arctic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what animal for Jonathan is. Is there a gibbering blue ass baboon? I don't know. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> anyway, David, you must know what f off is in Swedish. You've been there. <laughs> I think it's lovely to have you back, David. Mm, I do, really too. Is nice. David's been away in Hollywood filming an action thriller with Sylvester Stallone, haven't you? <laughs> Based on the life of the Queen Mother. <laughs> <laughs> David is the Queen Mother's body double. In <laughs> you will be reviewing that. I'll give you, you a good film, review. Film 2000, but I'm looking forward to that. 2002, we've moved on, but... I anyway. <laughs> <laughs> know how hard it is. <laughs> David, you just uh, get the hang sorry, of one sorry. and they go and change it on you. Have I misunderstood? Uh, have I misunderstood the content? <laughs> <laughs> That's Swedish. Have they misunderstood? Who did it? <laughs> She's rubbing off on me. <laughs> uh, is you it, is wish. It? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can drink, you can drink. <laughs> did you have anything thrown at you when you were playing? Uh, yeah, lots of... I had a pot noodle thrown at me in India. That's all right, isn't it? That's yeah, it was the first, first time I had a decent meal for a week, actually. <laughs> uh, and they used to throw the, they used to throw the old... Uh, throw the old happy fags. Yeah, they used to throw the old happy fags. <laughs> <laughs> the old happy fags? Yeah, in, in the West Indies, yeah. Which Today? Which was always good, yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah, and, uh, Gucci always used to say to me, loosen up, toughers, and I was already sort of loosened <laughs> I think Wenger has said something about uh, the Highbury pitch. He said it was too narrow. Is the correct answer for three oh, points. Well, <laughs> Our sense says, at Highbury, everything is very compact and confined. Our disciplinary problems are certainly linked to the size of the pitch. In fact, the ground is so small that even the people in row Z are within range of one of Jamie Carragher's coins. <laughs> Not a laugh between. <laughs> you get used to that. I know. I'm you, just, thanks, you do, David. You do I'm being patronised by David. <laughs> <laughs> David Seam, here's yeah. the answer to all Man United's defensive problems. Yapstam. Yapstam. Oh! Miles into the crowd. Stam recently tested positive after a routine drugs test in Italy, where he now plays. But what? was his excuse. Had he been suckling from the teat of a steroided up cow? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he make outrageous statements to try and sell his autobiography? Wasn't he that guy? Mm. You had your autobiography, didn't you? What was it called again, Phil? Uh, what now? What now? I believe that's part of a trilogy, isn't it? The next one is, I didn't do it. <laughs> the third one is, I can't remember. <laughs> David, you had your... And the fourth one is, was it a G-string stuck up a rock? <laughs> <laughs> you had a bit of a problem, didn't you, with some drug testing? Was it at Essex, or didn't you? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 they never called me. Give, uh, give a drugs test because <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't give a drugs test because you got stung by a wasp. Yeah, it? that's right. That's right. They couldn't find me, but they found the wasp sort of staggering around the field. <laughs> 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 yeah. Do you know what your name means? Yapstam. Yapstam. No, what's it mean? Jack Tree Trunk. <laughs> I'd sue if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Jonathan, you can do your autobiography. Lord of the Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Had he been suckling uh, from the teeth of a cow? <laughs> 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 We have no, no idea. idea. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> you don't know. Do you have any ideas over here? You don't know, don't you, Linford? Was he sucking from a cow? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that could happen, couldn't it? <laughs> that could happen. I wasn't okay. sure. Why couldn't it be a cow? The answer is... <laughs> Can I ask you just to check? Leave the cow! <laughs> check. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know why he's, just, angry? he's angry? He's angry because he knows I'm right. Listen, 
You've just got to wait now for the next line. Can we, wait, can, wait, can we wait, not, can wait. Can we not get the cow in and ask the cow? Wait! <laughs> you know wait! <laughs> I was just going to say, the cow said, move over, and the sheep said, bollocks. <laughs> I swear to you, this is genuinely the next line that is on the auto cube. Stan claims that it was the stress of being ditched by Sir Alex Ferguson that entirely naturally produced illegal substances in his blood. That and the fact that his mum was cross when he swapped their cow for a handful of magic balls. <laughs> Stan said that he went to play for Lazio because I felt that in Italy I could grow as a player. It was when he grew four inches in an hour that they rumbled him. <laughs> Yet Stan left Old Trafford after writing a contentious book containing the assertion that David Beckham wouldn't exactly qualify for Mastermind. Beckham is bound to be furious when someone reads it out to him. <laughs> And so, at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Linford's team have six. No. Time to look at some more ludicrous sporting behaviour as we ask what's going on. David's team, have a look at this. So, how do you explain that, David Steen? Can we have a look at that thing they were bringing out there? It's a weird thing they had there. Thank Bruno's bollocks. <laughs> I know he is, but what is it? <laughs> <laughs> you see? With the injections, it comes and goes. <laughs> have you ever eaten haggis all week? No. Right. no. Do you fancy some? Traditionally, it's normally eaten by the lady kneeling with a blindfold on. Now, if you want to come back to that, it's It is, isn't it? It is. Oh, yeah. But does it strike you that this is quite a simple question? It is. It, looks yeah, like it's it a is boxing quite a simple question. Is. Is. is it just a, like a... Boxing they have those boxing dinner. dinners? Boxing dinner, which... To, uh, this particular at the Cafe, Cafe Royal. Royal. Particular dinner, which is... Which is Burns Night. Thank you very much for three points. <laughs> It's actually an old tradition at London's Café Royal, dating back to 1891, to have boxing in the middle of the hotel restaurant on Burns Night. In fact, the Burns Night boxing used to be a regular feature on Grandstand, but the BBC have now lost the boxing rights. And even worse, the washing up's gone to sky. <laughs> Mr. Steen, what do you make of this? That's mm. mossy, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Doesn't he realise he's got to take his clothes off when he's in a sunbed thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not backstage at Pop Idol, is it? <laughs> that Gary Lineker, well, he's not here, he's actually filming his own version of uh, Pop Idol. It's a, it's a programme based on his life and career. It's called Bone Idol. <laughs> <laughs> he got so bored, like Linford's writing the next chapter in his autobiography. <laughs> Went on show, big mistake. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Must not do this Whatever. again. <laughs> As I said the first time, I'm back again. <laughs> Is it that the old uh, sheepskins are, are all coming back in fashion a little bit? And it's sort of like, that, it's been oh. a bit trendy and yeah. you yes, know all about that. Uh, I'll give you one point for that, Phil. Oh. That was the one and only John Motson showing the world that he has now become a fashion icon thanks to his sheepskin coats, according to GQ magazine. A motty style coat has become the essential item of clothing for the fashion A-list. Britney Spears said, it made me feel secure. Liz Hurley said, I love my thick furry coat. And Richard Keyes said, coat? This isn't a coat. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Linford's team have seven. Time now to manhandle some sports stars as we play Field the Sportsman. Linford and Rory, blindfolds on when you get up there, please. You're going to have 90 seconds to work out who you're feeling. You've not done this before, Linford, have you? No, but I'm used to feeling things. That's good. <laughs> Can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> and
And your time starts now. <laughs> <laughs> Denying board. <laughs> oh, what's this? Careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a big bloke with a broken leg, isn't it? <laughs> Damn, he's blessed. <laughs> <laughs> There's no greater compliment than that. <laughs> Is it a gliding person? Oh! Like a sort of champion, British champion? Yes, gliding? the world under 26 world champion, under 26 Jay Remick. <laughs> well, get out, you lazy. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> David and Jonathan, you're up. Please uh, embrace the darkness. Tell us what you feel. You know what it looks like from here? Oh. It looks like a really pathetic version of Blind Date. It's like, and who will Ulrika choose? <laughs> will it be, will it be hairy blokey, <laughs> Mr. Toki, or extra long pokey? <laughs> <laughs> Can we have our second mystery guest, please? Is there an elephant in here? Is that elephant coming from Blue Peter again? Nick, what's this? What is it? Whoa, what's this? What is it? I don't know. It's... I didn't sign up for this. This reminds me of my grandma's house, David. She used to have a lovely rockery out the front. Really? Rockery? What's a rockery? What's it? What's it? Tony Chef or something? It was a rockery. Is it like a cave? <laughs> Come on out, Osama, we know you're in there. <laughs> We've got you surrounded. <laughs> Is it my birthday? <laughs> Is it the world champion teenage BMX rider, Nick? Virtually, I'll give it to you. It's Tracy Mosey, mountain bike champion. Yours, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> they, they dug up, did they dig up the Blue Peter Garden again? <laughs> yeah. OK, so the score at the end of that round is David's team with nine and Lifford's team with ten. <laughs> We wind up the show by playing the name game, the team in the league goes first, which is Linford's team. Could you please pass that along to Rory? Thank you very much. Concentration, boys. Hey? Well, Rika was under the table the whole time and you were smiling. That's right. <laughs> I'm jealous, that's all. <laughs> You're jealous. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, fashion icon, commentator, sheepskin... Uh, Watson. Watson. John Watson, very good. He's in, he used to be manager of Aston Villa, has moved to Derby, beat, beat Tottenham 1 0. Let's just stay with that. Beat Tottenham 1 0. <laughs> Fantastic. John uh, this is a West Indies cricketer. First name, Jimmy something Hasselbank. Floyd. Floyd. And it's something you smoke. Rafer. Floyd. Rafer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, something one smokes, I should say. Oh, this really. is a West Indies cricketer. He's got the same Christian name as Anderson, who plays the Spurs. That is Darren. Darren. And it's something you smoke. <laughs> <laughs> and it's more sort of a native sounding word. Ganja. <laughs> Motor racing uh, driver. The first, um, the first, his first name is his first name is something you do at the second name. Uh, so, in fact, 
the second name is an anagram of the first. Oh, no, it's not. Um, you go to a party where you make love to lots of people. It's called an orgy. orgy. Or, no, correct. <laughs> first name is miracle. What in my you case. do <laughs> at an orgy what, among you know shag orgy. Yeah, but it's more, it's more of a Christian name, you know, shag orgy. This is sort of, um, you know a man's name. Think of uh, a runner called Bannister. Roger. 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 <laughs> This is, um, <laughs> this is a woman boxer. Um, her first name is the same as Mrs. Bush. George. Uh, Jordan. <laughs> or Streisand, or one of those people. Barbara. Barbara. You've moved on to 15 7. We'll win it for I think you. We could do this. Yeah, well, well, we could pass that along to Jonathan. Get rid of that coffee. Your time, Jonathan, right. starts now. Footballer, we had him early. He covers himself with a lovely bit of Vicks. He likes um, a bit of vapour. Paul Merson. Paul Merson, well done. All right. Uh, silly name. Uh, he was uh, we're a bald bloke, very ugly. He was done for dope. <laughs> Stam, yep. Stam. Yep, Stam. OK. Uh, yeah, this so well, so uh, you used to work with him, I think, on Gladiator. The, one of the ones you didn't sleep with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you did, I don't, oh, and it, did you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Co-host. He was... Wait, we're Tom Fashioning. Yeah, that's the one. OK. <laughs> With you. <laughs> 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 so, what are you, what are you telling us? You did sleep with John Fashion. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not being rude, but wasn't that in the final? Didn't they have to get past you to get to the actual? <laughs> <laughs> First name is a comedian, something sale, big fat bloke. Hello, uh, John. Alexi. Alexi. Yep. Second name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's what a lady might do for a special occasion for gentlemen. <laughs> it's usually Easter in our house. Uh, maybe an anniversary or, or a first date a weekend. <laughs> or That's after, or traditionally, oh, no, it's, after a sports it's quiz. A... <laughs> 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 A lady would... Alexi Head. It's what you would do if you were... If you were not blowing, but you were... Sucking. Yeah, and, and instead off. of doing... Yes. Oh, <laughs> Well, right. Think, and now no, this no, would no, be no, like if this was like the reds. We're, we're in. No, forget if, the reds. If this was like your silver. This would be a silver wedding anniversary. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Swallow. Yeah. <laughs> First name like the actress uh, Foster. Jodie. Jodie Swallow. Swallow. Well done. <laughs> So, at the end of the game, David's team had 14, but this week's winner is Linford's team with 15! <laughs> so, our thanks to David, Jonathan and Ulrika, Linford, Rory and Phil. We're all off to disconnect the smoke alarm in Phil's dressing room. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Ulrika's back with Dog Eat Dog tomorrow at 5 past 6 on BBC One. Have I Got News For You is on BBC Two in a couple of minutes tonight and the comedy continues here on BBC One after the news. We're chewing the fat and it's only TV but I like it.